Hi, this is Larry London. Welcome to Border Crossings. Today, we are taking you to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where we find Wyatt and Sean. They are part of a band called the Ivy. Are there a lot of acts that come out of Oklahoma? There's a fair amount. I, I would say the scene is growing every year here. So The scene is growing. And what, what what is it about music that attracted you guys to want to form a band together? Well, um, we've both been playing music from a young age, and uh, we both got into music production around the same time. And um, I've been playing in bands and playing guitar and singing in various uh, environments since I was about 16. And mm -hmm. so Sean and I met at music college. And so we decided to come together. So. Okay, so how does this work since you both have very different musical tastes? One of you grew up on Radiohead and Green Day, and the other one, it says, was more R&B or, or uh, you know, that, that kind of sound. So how do you combine the, the rock sound with the R&B? Yeah, I think, you know, both of us decided to pursue music in college. So we did music production. And whenever we got to talking, we had a lot of the same classes together. Whenever we talked, although we did have some differences in music growing up, there was a lot of uh similarities in the inter in the music that we liked mm -hmm. and we ended up just writing songs together and i think we kind of were able to bring to the table what the other one couldn't yeah mm -hmm. yeah right say, uh, a re sorry it was a really good uh mixture of like my guitar background with sean's more like edm production and stuff like that and blending them together to form something new. Hmm. Well, that's great. I mean, it's great that you can balance each other because having balance is a very good thing. And you cover a lot of um, different different so styles. So what would you describe your music as? I would say we're a good blend of indie pop, uh, indie rock, and uh, some synth pop, maybe. Mm -hmm. so. That's great. And I know that you did Lollapalooza, too. You did the music festival, which... That's a huge music festival. Yes, we did the, uh, was it 2020? Yeah, it was really exciting. Yeah. Uh, it, it was 2020, so due to COVID, it was a live, it was a um, video. video performance. Oh, virtual. So I was going to ask you yeah. if you had a preference over the live festival audience of 50,000 or if you <laughs> like the smaller intimate gatherings. But uh, well, obviously you didn't do the 50,000. Yeah, it was 50,000 on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. So, I mean, do you connect better in smaller venues with your audience or does it really matter to you? Because some artists prefer the smaller, more intimate settings to really connect with the audience and some it doesn't really matter. I would say there, there is that intimacy factor in a smaller room that I really enjoy. But whenever you're playing to a much bigger crowd, there's less anxiety i would say because it's like i can't really see anyone's faces and it's you know th there's pros and cons to both i'd say so mm -hmm. so what are you going to do first we're going to check out music from the ivy and what's the first song we can uh, we can listen to and watch uh, we're, we're going to be playing our song uh, good faith so. good faith all right here are the ivy with good faith Watch it go to waste, take it on 
border crossings it's the ivy the song is good faith so what was the inspiration behind this song is it religion or or exactly what what what's the message yeah um i would say throughout our songs that we've been writing there's been a theme of um kind of leaving the old self behind and so this song is just kind of an anthem to that maybe leaving behind uh, old belief systems and just kind of surrendering to the flow of life i guess mm. yeah. did the COVID experience change your writing approach your writing styles i would say yeah sean and i were doing a lot more virtual stuff um, than we normally would have and so that that kind of shifted our process a little bit but um for the most part i would say the the process has stayed about the same. So. Mm -hmm. And so you guys met in college, as you mentioned. So what was it that made you two decide you wanted to record together as a duo? I think that it came more organically than you would think. It started out with Wyatt coming up to me one day and singing me a chorus that he had in his head. And he said, I don't know what this song could be, but this is a really cool melody. And by the end of the month, we had recorded it and just tried our hand at writing a song. And we decided to put it online. And next thing you know, we, we had quite a few songs online. Hmm. So what comes first for you guys? The melody, the lyrics? Is it different every time? Usually different every time. But uh, I would say melody and just kind of a skeleton production mm -hmm. uh, usually comes first. Is one of you the guy who does the lyrics, the other one the melody? Or is this a collaborative? Everybody does everything. Well, why it sings, so I probably would rather that the lyrics come directly from the mouth of the singer. <laughs> so why it does the lyric writing. Mm -hmm. So why it, why did you get into music? Because most rock singers say the girls. So what is it that drew you to music? Well, from a young age, I, uh, I grew up listening to people like George Strait and George Jones and a lot of like 80s, 90s country music. And I always just was so mesmerized by what those guys would do and watching live shows and stuff. And I, there was something about the performance aspect that really drew me in. Um, but as, as I got older, I got a lot more drawn onto uh, more production based music and like getting obsessed with trying to replicate certain sounds and things like that. So that, um, sound creation part always interested me. And so naturally that kind of progressed into me like writing my own music. So, uh, mm. but yeah, there's not really any underlying motivation like girls or anything like that. I just uh, enjoy it. That's where you went. You, you fell in yeah. love with music and that's what you're doing. Uh, so you guys have been together for how long? Since 2016. Yep. And you have recorded three uh, EPs? Yes, yes. sir. All right. And uh, do we have a fourth one coming or a full studio album? What's on the horizon? Yeah, we have our full studio album coming out February 23rd. The door's still open. It's going to be our first full length debut album. Wow, that's exciting. Do you have a name for your fans? Oh, no, we haven't come up with a pet name yet, but... <laughs> Yeah, but usually artists call them something, refer to them as something. It'd be interesting to know if sure. uh, you guys had, okay, we're going to do another song. What would you like to do next? Uh, we're going to do a song off of our last EP called Hurts Just Right. All right, let's check it out to Hurts Just Right. It's the Ivy on Border Crossings.
crossings hurts just right and we've got the ivy with us yes. and so sean you are the instrumental member of the band since why it is the voice of the band yeah definitely we both we both play why it does guitar and ivy bass and mm -hmm. all the synths on stage mm -hmm. and what drew you to the guitar yeah so uh yeah, so growing up, I played a bunch of different instruments, and then in the Ivy, um, Wyatt was just a way better guitarist than I was. So I said, you take care of the vocals and playing the guitar, and I'll do all the synths and play the bass. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell me about the name The Ivy. What, where, what's the inspiration of that? Where did you come up with the name The Ivy? Yeah, um, well, actually, right before I met Wyatt, I had already come up with the name The Ivy, and funnily enough, it was because I just couldn't kick Poison Ivy. I got Poison Ivy once and I just kept getting it again and again. And so during that time, I was trying to come up with a band name. And as a joke, I told my friend, let me call myself the Ivy. And they were like, hey, that, that's cool. See if it's taken. And it wasn't. Mm. <laughs> you know what would be a great name for a band? Free Beer. Because you put that on a marquee. Free Beer tonight. Ah. <laughs> there you go. Place would be full. But uh, that project. <laughs> so, you know, the Ivy, it's an interesting name um, and it's because of Poison Ivy now. And, you, you know, you shared an interesting story of how you came up with the name. But I'd like to know where's the most interesting or unusual place you got inspiration for a song that you've ever written a song. Mm -hmm. Interesting place. Well, when we were both in college and we were living in the dorm rooms, there were a few times where we were we would write lyrics and then record them at the same time. And we were desperately trying to find places that we could record quietly on campus other than just our bedrooms. And so we would find ourselves in classrooms. And um, one time we were kind of workshopping a song right next to a classroom where there was like a final exam going on and the professor walked in mid vocal take and just says hey guys we can hear everything you guys are saying <laughs> so that was a little bit uh embarrassing but it's fun to look back on so mm -hmm. and, and you got a, you got an idea for a song uh, about a trip to mexico i i read yeah for this last album we decided to uh fly to mexico and try to write our album or a good majority of the songs down there on a writing trip and so just being in Mexico helped to inspire a lot of the songs um, that are going to be on this EP or on this um, album. album. So is this, uh, the, the, you know, the, the new album, your trip to Mexico is, can I take it that you do a lot of international performances or was this just a pleasure vacation? Never have actually. Um, the story is that I basically just got my passport in the mail. And we had planned all year to kind of go somewhere snowy, like uh, Vermont or, well. Or, or Mexico. Sorry. Let's go skiing in Mexico. That's right, <laughs> right. But, yeah, we kind of shifted gears and wanted to go somewhere sunny and tropical. So That's great. That's great. All right. Well, would you do another song for us? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll do our song Street Dog off of our new album. All right. Street Dog. The new album is coming out soon. Here they are, the Ivy on Border Crossings. Set it. 
Border Crossings and Street Dog. And the inspiration for that is? So uh, when we were on that Mexico trip that we talked about, um, we, every morning we'd walk outside and there were just tons of dogs everywhere. And they didn't, it didn't really look like they belonged to anybody. They were just kind of roaming around free and they just had this confidence that I can't even describe. They weren't scared of people. And uh, it was just, yeah, we, we just loved it. So that was mm. kind of where the idea started. Yeah, and I've seen in many different countries I've been to uh, where they have the dogs living outside and yeah. up and down the streets and, and whatnot. But uh, so touring, going back to touring, what is the plan for touring for the Ivy? Uh, do you have a tour schedule set uh, when you release the album? What's your plan? Yeah, well, we're we're looking at booking tours um, following the album and then uh, just kind of seeing what happens after that. So we're mm -hmm. we're booking right now and excited to see what comes. Mm -hmm. And so you are broadcasting to 100 different countries right now around the world. They're meeting the Ivy for the first time. So the question they would want to know is, are you going to do international touring? We very much want to, and it is in the works right now. So I oh, <laughs> can't yeah. say too much about it. But can't okay. say too much. The old, I can't tell you yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've got uh, the Ivy with us here today, and we're talking about the new album. What's the new album called? It's called A Door Still Open. A Door Still Open. How did you come up with that name? Um, well, I was kind of just thinking about what I said earlier about the leaving behind, uh, you know, an older version of yourself and things like that. Um, and I was just thinking, you know, it always kind of feels like there's a, a door still open if you ever wanted to go back and retrieve the good parts of your past and things like that. So mm -hmm. if you couldn't do music, what would you want to do? Oh, man, I've thought about this a lot. I really wanted to go into um, either architecture or some kind of animal therapy related job. Oh, that's great. Bless your yeah. heart. That's great. Two yeah. very different polar yeah, opposite right. careers, but yeah, that's, right. that's great. So obviously you're, you're very talented uh, with drawing because you can't be an architect if you can't draw. And right. how about you? Uh, yeah, probably engineering or something creative. Definitely mm -hmm. love using my creative side of my brain. You guys seem very chill, very calm, very laid back yeah. kind of guys. Yeah. Maybe I have I'm you pegged wrong with that. But uh, we're, we're glad to have you both on on the show. And this is an exciting time for you. I mean, you've put out so many EPs and now the first full studio album's coming out. And, uh, and touring is on the horizon. Where can people find more information about the Ivy? If they want to write to you guys on social media or check out your website, where would they go? Yeah, our website is wearetheivy.com. And then all of our social media links, uh, YouTube, Instagram, it's all at We Are the Ivy. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, I, I was in Oklahoma once before. And oh, yeah. I, yeah, the city was Enid, Oklahoma. Yeah. And uh, I just remember tumbleweed. That's all I remember about going to Enid <laughs> was the tumbleweed blowing down the street. But I'm sure That's Tulsa awesome. is a much more you know, <laughs> happening place than Enid. There's a little more happening, you know. Yeah, more <laughs> than tumbleweed. <laughs> more than tumbleweed. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, you cool. know, because we're broadcasting to an international audience around the world uh, and also to the troops who tune in as well. Is there any message you'd like to send out? Shout out, say hello. Well, I mean, shout out to the troops. Thanks for your service. Uh, and yeah, just thanks for tuning in. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, love our international fans. Yep. Well, we are so happy to have Sean and Wyatt on. They are the Ivy. Thank you guys for being on. What's the release date for the new album? February 23rd. February 23rd. And again, it's called? A Door Still Open. A Door Still Open from the Ivy. Get the new album. Thank you, guys. This is Border Crossings, and I'm Larry London for VOA TV. Thanks for watching.